Alright, how's it going guys? So, today I finally got my Jenny guide that's going to be released right here, and I I'm really hoping that this guide goes really well. Uh, hopefully at least better than the last two guides. I'm hoping that I can keep steadily improving these as I go along, but I actually main her, I main Jenny, so I kind of feel like I really should be able to give kind of an accurate representation of her and kind of on the nuances and how she plays and how uh, you play with her things like that. Um, last time in my uh, Cicela guide, I really didn't uh, dive too much into kind of the how to use part of the part of the video. Uh, so I'm really hoping to put a lot more emphasis, a lot, emphasis, a lot more focus on that with this video. Uh, in addition, I'll be kind of, I'll be trying to include some, some of my mediocre gameplay to kind of give a visual aspect that's a little bit more engaging than the kind of like the weird still image slideshow shit format that uh, I'd been previously using. Um, I have to say though, please, uh, please keep in mind, I'm no Louisel, Lo Lo I, I, I ain't that good, so I apologize uh, if the gameplay isn't the best. Um, I'm not the best, I, I find the, I, like in a lot of games, like games like Overwatch, games like, uh, just a lot of games in general, I find the, the kind of best part that I am, uh, not the best part, but like, the thing that I excel in is kind of analyzing things, researching things, looking into a lot of the kind of the, the statistics, the, the numbers, the interactions of each character, so I find that's what I'm generally better with, so like I said, I may not be the best, but I have put a lot of time and effort into researching a lot of these character interactions, a lot of things, so uh, at least hear me out, I suppose, is what I'm basically trying to say. So let's just dive right into it. So with Jenny, you play the protagonist who can be the catalyst for your victory. She likes long walks on the beach and expressing her acting abilities by uh, laying on the ground and not moving, pretending to be dead. So fun stuff. Um, in all honesty, Jenny is one of the most, if not the most, uh, forgiving characters in the entire game. Another really good kind of forgiving character for newer players is Leon, I find. Uh, but uh, that's that's for another day. That's for another day. Um, she's one of the few characters who can really recover from a kind of a, uh, a heavily punished misplay. And like, like I said, a not a not not a lot of characters can really do that. So it's uh, it's really cool for her because she can play really aggressive. She can be uh, she can like play over aggressive and get punished for it. She can make a bad play and she's not dead. She's still in it to win it. So that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, I quickly like to go over the strengths and weaknesses that she has that she brings to the table, uh, that she exhibits before I kind of go on to the how to use her portion of the video. So uh, I'll go over those and then yeah, we'll get into the, uh, the actual meaning of the title, how to use this character. So strengths, like I mentioned, she's very, very forgiving. She can come back from a misplay. That's kind of the core concept of how she plays. That's a really, really very nice thing about her. If uh, for anyone who plays Pokemon, she's basically got uh, Sturdy as her ability, which is kind of a very, very cool thing. So she's got a lot of survivability in that sense. Uh, both of her abilities uh, kind of be used, kind of can be used offensively, defensively, um, finish out a fight, clean out a fight, um, get away from a fight, a whole bunch of stuff. Just uh, there's a lot of focus on her for survival, for survivability. Um, let me correct that, sorry, aggressive survivability. If that, if that makes any sense, she's got a lot of focus on aggressive survivability, which is uh, which is honestly a really, really fun way to play the game. It's a really fun way to play, to play the game, because you can just go balls deep, balls to the wall, hitting shit, and if you get punished, then it's not game over. So, so like I said, it's a really, really fun way to play. I really like it. Um, going into that, like I said, she's very good at being aggressive, very good at harassing, because she can come back from that. Uh, and that's not just play dead. Um, Revenge play goes in to be very aggressive, very offensive as well. She kind of can get out damaged in certain cases uh, a lot of times just based on her stats and based on a lot of things about her, but revenge play can kind of mitigate that that uh, that kind of gap, I suppose you'd say. Um, and like, w revenge play has a crazy, crazy low cooldown. Like, it's an insanely low cooldown. Like, 40 seconds to 40 seconds. That's that's a crazy cooldown for an offensive, like, for an offensive tool, for just basically another attack, for, for a stronger attack. It's it's a really, really cool ability, and, like, just the fact that it's cooldown is so low is what makes it really an incredible ability. And, like, this really uh, goes into kind of prolonged fights, and especially fights that she could be almost losing or just about to lose, it can really bring her back and clean out and finish out the fight, because... And that's another thing, like, if you're fighting a Jenny and you're, like, below half health, and you don't have a way to reliably get your health higher, or it doesn't even have to be that. Like, if you're below half health and you're fighting a Jenny, you're pressured to heal. Like, you can't even just keep brawling, even if Jenny's like a third health. If you're below half health, you're kind of pressured to heal because you don't want to be hit, hit with like a, a revenge play and then second hit combo and then just be finished and just dead because you don't have 
uh, play dead. Unless uh, I guess unless it's Jenny v Jenny, but then that's uh, that's a whole other story. But um, yeah, for real, like it's it, it pressures people to heal. It pressures people to be wary of their health bar getting low, which it puts a lot of pressure on them and it can force them out. It can um, get you mastered because if they're just standing there healing and you're hitting them and. Uh, like, if, if, if they want to beat you 1v1 and they're just staying there and they're trying to heal through your hits and just keep attacking you and, like I said, healing through your hits so that they can stay above a certain amount of health so that revenge play isn't that big of a threat, uh, they're, they're, they're just giving you mastery and stuff, so it's kind of cool, like I said, it's just, it's a really good ability, it's a really strong ability, especially for, especially, actually, here's, here's the thing to mention, it's especially good against, um, even matchups, so if you're against someone who's basically... Mat matching you blow for blow, um, healing you heal for heal, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, Revenge play is going to let you come on top on that encounter um, against kind of a player that is matching you for for damage, for blows, for heals, for stuff along the lines of that. So that's a really cool thing, especially like I mentioned because of its insane cooldown. Um, she's extremely easy getting to top five with, like which is r when you're in ranked top five is like all that all that matters. Like you get. If you finish like fourth, you're gonna get like what, like two rank points. But hey, you're not losing rank points. So like I said, she's extremely easy to get into top five with, which is really nice to play ranked with her. Like playing ranked with her is really nice because you very rarely lose points um, because of how survivable she is. How how many options she has? As a matter of fact, she's got a lot of options open for her. Um, she's got a flexible weapon choice, like I said. She's got uh, good mastery in a few uh, in a few uh, few different categories, which is kind of nice. So, it's kind of open to your playstyle if you want to play. Uh, I mean, stab is really good. I don't know why you wouldn't just go with stab, but if you want to go with um, go with guns, I mentioned this in my Sacella guide, but guns are high risk, high reward, very high risk, high reward. You can end up going, you can end up going get with a gun and getting an insane amount of damage, and you know you're at the you're at the state where sure you shoot and you give off your location but ain't nobody coming to find you because you're like running the game you're at the top of the game top of the leaderboard top of the damage top of the kills all that shit so yeah very very high reward but at the same time it's very high risk you can be using a gun and then i don't know shoot a hunting dog and then you get ambushed by like four players you're like well shit or if you're in an area and stuff goes off or if you run out of ammo and stuff happens or if you have to reload it's very high risk very 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 high risk uh, but as mentioned, it's also very high reward. So getting into her weaknesses, I kind of alluded to these in the strengths, but I'll uh, I'll bring them up very specifically right here. She is um, able to get out damaged in a lot of cases, in a lot of different uh, times. I mean, her stats are good. Her stats are good. She's offensive. She's got she's got good offensive stats. Don't get me wrong. She re like she really does. Like I'm not I don't want to play her down. She's got pretty decent uh, offensive stats, but she does get out damaged in a lot of cases. Um, early game to, to an extent I suppose not as much especially because a lot of her roots are have really really quick weapons to build really good weapons to build really really quickly um I want to get I'll get into those very in, in a, a very soon um check right at the beginning for the table of contents as always if you're interested in uh in just jumping directly to it but like I said she got very quick weapons to upgrade very, very quickly but like I said she can get out, out damaged in a lot of scenarios I find sometimes her damage is a little bit disappointing uh against certain members of the cast so that's a little bit unfortunate right there um but I, like the fact that she can play so aggressively is basically the way to mitigate that if you play aggressively enough then you'll be able to keep pace with a lot of the top tier uh offensive threats that are kind of built on scaling built on damage and stuff like that um she's uh the other huge thing is she's um kind of struggles to take first place. I think this is the biggest weakness for her, is she really struggles to take first place, um, like, ever. Like, she really, really struggles to take first place. Like, if you're going against last mon, uh, not last mon, if you're going against last player, uh, like, Fiora, or last player, really last player anything, you're going to, against last player Fiora, maybe, um, last, last player Roselio, last player Leon, um, even, like, last player, like, Zaheer, I've seen a lot of times, um, you have a lot of- I, I often find it's really hard to take first place with her. I really do. Like, I've, I've- and that's just not me being- that's not just me being garbage, because, like, I play a lot of different characters, so I compare kind of a lot of different things for a lot of different characters, and I find she's really, really hard to take first place with. She's exceptionally easy to get in top five, but she has a really hard time getting to first place. She can get to second pretty- like, she can get to second as easy- like, as easily as anything else, but 
she really struggles taking the actual first place slot because she gets outpaced, she gets out damaged, um, gets outscaled in just a lot of different cases. So that's a huge weakness, I think. If you want to play Jenny, you have to come to terms with the fact that there are some games that you're not going to be able to win. There are some games where you're just, it's not in the cards for you. You have to accept that. Uh, but I mean, second place has, I mean, second place isn't bad like I, I, I play it as if like you get second place and you lose 50 rank points but second place isn't bad so playing with her on the ladder being able to get in top five is a nice thing but like i said how hard hard time getting into the first place slot in a lot of different uh situations another thing uh she's kind of vulnerable when play dead's on cooldown i mean that's kind of an obvious thing but she definitely is vulnerable when play dead's on cooldown i feel like uh in order to use uh play dead effectively you have to have the recovery items to back it up so if you do like like here's the thing like if you if play dead prompts and you go down to one health and then you can't heal up how like up to like at least at least least minimum bare minimum 50 percent in like uh in, in in your five second where they basically can't find you then play dead it's not doing anything because like if you're trying to run around the map like trying to heal from sleeping uh, or resting or whatever then it's like you've already lost like if you're trying to go from one hp to full hp or even one hp to like 50 percent hp and then look for health items just by resting you've lost the game you may as well call it quits because you waste so much time just by doing that that it's it's over like it's already over like it's not even worth i mean I, you're you don't leave you don't leave because it's ranked and you don't leave you don't leave that shit in ranked because you lose rank points, so like, don't do that. But like, if you're in that situation where you don't have recovery item, play dead, uh, prompts, you're at 1 HP, and you have to rest up to a good amount of health, you've, you've lost the game. Like, you have to accept that. You have to just like, like, try to like, play like a che the cheese strat where you just don't get hit, and you just hide the whole time. Um, because like I said, you're, you're not gonna win. You're not gonna out damage anyone. By the time you start doing anything, you're, you've already, like, gotten outpaced. You've as good as died at that point anyways. Um, so that's, that's annoying, like I said. But you're, and, and you're, like I said, you're vulnerable when you're play dead on cooldown. So if you play aggressive, then play, and then play dead prompts, and then in between that time, uh, it's about nine minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, like, nine minute cooldown, which, like, it sounds crazy, but, like, the fact that you can prevent yourself from dying twice in like on average twice a game that's good that's really good like the fact that it is a cooldown and not just an activate once a game ability is crazy that's really good like people don't understand how good it is that we got a cooldown ability for play dead if play dead was activate once a game it would no it wouldn't be anywhere near as good as it is right now because right now you have the ability to activate it early game to be able to play extremely aggressively and the ability to have that buffer late game. And they're both incredibly important and they're both completely different times of the game. And that's what makes it so good. It's the fact that it's a cooldown ability. But that, I mean, that's probably what it is the sweetest is. Like I said, uh, you're vulnerable when it's on cooldown. So when it's on cooldown, you are vulnerable because you're playing, you're kind of playing in the back with it. Not really playing in the back, but like you really have to cool down from there because if you get punished while it's on cooldown, it's over, it's game over, man. So yeah, you do have to deal with that. You do have to, you have to transition, that's what I'm trying to say. You have to be able to transition from playing hyper-aggressively to playing more more of a, a paced match after you play aggressively and after you after play dead prompts the first time. If it prompts the first time. If it doesn't prompt the first time, then that's that's pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. But uh, yeah, you have to deal with that. You have to be able to transition your playstyle, and that's kind of a cool thing. Um, oh, another huge weakness. This is a this shit's annoying as, as fuck, dude. The fact that your weapon is basically whatever you start with is random so like if you want like if you don't want to fuck around with them guns if you don't want to fuck with vision but you start with a gun then well tough titties you have to go find some stab weapons and if you find people on the way you're not building up mastery because if you shoot them you're not getting mastery for a stab so it's like you're wasting your time and you're giving mastery because like it's basically like you're giving free mastery because you're not gaining anything out of it so you're it's 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 just like a lose-lose scenario if you're attacking someone with a starter weapon that isn't going to be building towards your end game mastery so that's a little bit annoying like i said if you don't want to fuck with the vision and you just start with a gun and you don't want that shit that's a little bit unfortunate uh same thing i guess if you start with stab and you want the gun uh that's also a little bit unfortunate especially because you have to find the gun and the bullets before you can start doing anything effectively so the, the fact that your weapon start is rng related is uh, it's a little bit annoying i think it's cool I, I like the fact that you have options with her i like the fact that you have basically two 
mas two weapon mastery um, stats are really powerful and both viable. Plus the fact that she's just got that um the random stats as well, so you can end up with a really like you can actually end up with a really uh, really good starting mastery with her random stats. So that's another really cool thing. But the fact that it, her weapon start her starter weapon is basically RNG related is a really annoying thing. It's a it, it, it's a hundred percent a weakness. I have to bring it up. A hundred percent a weakness for her. All right, so this is the part where I'm going to go into kind of the uh, the the how to play her or my recommended ways of playing her. And I mean, a lot of characters have a lot of different options. I think. Jenny is one of the most flexible characters in terms of how you can play her. Um, I, I kind of alluded to this in my Bernice guide, because Bernice is a good example as well. Um, but you can play her in a lot of different ways. Uh, I gave, like I talked about in my Bernice guide, Bernice can play very offensively very early. He can play more of a, uh, a paced game. He can play more of a late game. Uh, a late game strategy, a late game build, a kind of focus on survivability, focus on tankiness, focus on finishing out the match um and jenny's the same jenny can focus on being extremely offensive or she can focus on uh, her survivability uh and it sounds weird to say because like when you kind of glance her over she seems as a she, she seems very much as just a full offensive character something you might think of um shuichi or even jackie or something i suppose or I, I don't know maybe not maybe you guys don't but i think like when i first started the game and i glanced over jack uh glanced over jenny she see she struck me just when I first saw her as a very offensive character, as a very offensive build that you'd want to go for. But because of her abilities and because of a lot of just a lot of things about her, she has the options to play in a lot of different roles and she has a lot of flexibility. And I want to go over those. So I want to go over her kind of offensive uh, offensive capabilities first because I think that's the in general the funnest ways to play. The funnest ways to play is being offensive. Honestly, like there's not like Jackie? Jackie is hella more fun to play than something like, uh, something like Leon, I guess. Something like, uh, yeah, let's just say Leon. Something like Leon. Jackie is so fun to play. I, I don't play her. I don't play her because I'm bad with her. But she is so fun to play because of how offensive she is. How, how, how much she gets the adrenaline pumping. She is so fun to play. Um, and characters that are, like, focused on late game, focus on building stuff. It feels like a chore. Like, game... Characters where you play to survive, play to get the late game, often feel like a chore because you're just going building stuff. Um, when you go to attack someone in another location, it feels like a chore. It feels like, oh, someone's going, I have to go build Master now, now, then I have to go back to my area. It feels like a chore. Everything you do feels like a chore. Uh, and you don't get that with offensive characters. It's just hit, 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 punch, attack, 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 build mastery, get kills. And it, it's exhilarating. It really, really is. But those are high risk, high reward, and those depend on momentum. I, I alluded to this actually in the tier list. If you read the tier list, um, I mentioned a section on Jackie and why she's not higher on the tier list. And it's because they depend on momentum. They're very fun to play, but they're, again, high risk, high reward in a sense. Because once you start losing momentum, then you get just beaten down by those late game tanks that I was mentioning. Those late game things that focus on surviving, focus on building up, focus on setting themselves up for the sweep late game. So yeah, that's kind of a thing. Um, but anyways, Jenny can be played very offensively. How you can play her offensively, uh, there's a lot of options. I'm gonna go into specific roots very soon. Uh, so gun roots and stab roots are there. I'm gonna go into a few of them, but you kind of want to play her very, very aggressive, very, very aggressively early game. So you start in an area that you can build a good weapon early so a few examples is like the the twin knives that's not the twin knives the twin swords or the twin swords that's kind of a nice thing um but anyways you can build something uh, a really really early weapon twin swords ak is another option as well uh but you build yourself a, you go to an area that you can get yourself a good weapon really quickly but your area you want to go to you want an area that can give you food as well because like i said play dead relies on being able to get yourself back up to at least 50 percent really really quickly so go to an area you get food you get a you get a uh get a good weapon and you know you start building your stuff and then when you see people um when you see people making noise you go attack them you go attack them build up mastery um you back out when you need to you stay as much as you can you go to a bunch of areas and you just start attacking people while you're building stuff up um the other thing is you don't even have to wait for hearing people attack. Based on your, based on the kind of composition of the lobby, you can kind of judge where people are going to start. So, um, 
if there's a lot of people that are going to start at the temple, then you have to start at the temple, beat people down. You can get a decent weapon at the temple, uh, as long as you start with the weapon that you want to build mastery. Like you mentioned, if you want to start at the temple and get the, get like the spear and stuff, but you start with a gun, then that's a little bit, you don't really want to do that because you're going to be, you know, there's going to be like three people there and you're not going to be building your mastery. Uh, but if you start with like a stab weapon and you know there's a lot of people going to be going to the temple, then yeah, start in an area that's heavy traffic and build up your mastery. Build up your mastery, build up your weapons, build up your stuff, get damage off. Um, a lot of times you can chase a lot of people out. Like you can chase a lot of people out because she, like I mentioned, she's got pretty good stats early game. She's got pretty good offensive stats. Um, she gets outpaced by a few people, uh, like I mentioned before, but... I mean, a lot of times, a lot of times, trading blows early is kind of, kind of worth it for Jenny as long as you've got kind of a backup for, backup for that player. Um, once you've played off, like once you played really, really offensively and played at prompts and you lose your kind of your safety buffer, safety net in the back, uh, really quickly heal up, get up, get your health back up. You've got five seconds where you can, but heal up and then you have to play very conservatively, not very, very conservatively, like you would play. I don't know, not, you don't have to play like super conservatively, but you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you can't come back because you don't have your safety net anymore. So once it prompts, you play a little bit more conservatively. At that point, you built up a lot, or you should have built up a lot of mastery. You should have built up a decent amount of weapons. You should still have some food left, um, but if you have to use, if you had to burn through all your food just to kind of uh, keep the fight going, keep your mastery building, that's kind of okay, uh, depending on who you were training blows with, I suppose. Um, but yeah, at this point, play a lot more conservatively. You've got a stash of mastery built up, so that's going to be nice. It's going to be kind of giving you a good start. And once, if you've got a good start, which is what Jenny is good at, Jenny is good at getting a good start if you play her to her full effect, um, it's going to just make the late game a lot easier. Because the mid game is kind of where she's a little bit weaker. Um, I know it kind of says that on the... I, at least I think it says that on the kind of the, the the thing on the actual game in in the kind of information section i think it says she's strong early um weak middle and then i think she's either normal or yeah she, i think she's normal uh late game i think it is but anyway yeah it says that but i kind of want to elaborate on that so she is weak in the mid game because play dead's on cooldown so she can't play as aggressively um like if you look at the thing she's strong and normal is because those are the times of the game that her uh, play dead is off cooldown um, but yeah, so you want to play a lot more conservatively in the mid-game, you want to play to not die, you want to play, because like I said, you've already built up a good amount of mastery, you obviously don't just stop building up mastery at this point, but you don't have to risk your life to build up mastery at this point. You want to keep building, maybe make sure to finish off your weapon fully, um, get yourself recovery items, because like I said, late game, with Playdead as being activated, as being uh, online as well, you're going to need a way to... Uh, come back to mitigate the 1 HP thing that you go down to. Uh, so you want to make sure, like I said, you have your items. Uh, focus on building your items, focus on building yourself up, focus on keeping yourself alive. Um, don't forget about building mastery at this point of the game, but don't risk your life to build up mastery is basically what I'm saying. Because the early game, you can risk your life to build up mastery. You really can. As long as you're not, like, feeding. Feeding is horrible. If you feed early game, that's not good. If you feed... If, you, if you're just feeding early game like suiciding yourself to feed uh, and knock off play dead just to say like oh i played aggressive that's that's no bueno that's not what you do you have to be it has to be worth it i suppose i mean that this sounds like really like I, i'm not really going into it but yeah like i say like you, you don't want to feed you you don't really want to feed like you don't want to just go and basically just give mastery and you don't want to like it has to be worth it like who you're get, who you're farming off of i suppose is what basically what i'm trying to say but you do you basically can play aggressively to the extent where you're risking your life because you can come back from it can't do that mid game uh late game late game is a l less offensive it's a more re i don't know if relaxed is the right, right way of saying it. it's a more conservative way of playing the early game but it's a lot more offensive way of playing the mid game is how you're playing the late game if any of that shit makes any sense but yeah like i said late game uh depending on how your early game and your mid game went you want to judge how you're standing how, how you're matching up against the remaining players in the game so if you have a good shot to take first place then yeah you're gonna be playing you're gonna be playing aggressively to the extent where you're gonna be playing aggressively because you don't want to be outpaced like late game like i said she's kind of she can be outpaced late game even if she's got a good even if she's leading unless she's got a good lead she can be outpaced late game so you have to keep up the pressure late game and with play dead you can do that um late game like i said like pl uh, play dead's on cooldown but don't 
like, you have to be careful about, like, saving Playdead for, like, the last person. Because, like, oftentimes saving Playdead for the last, last person doesn't even do anything. Because if you don't play offensively enough in the late game to stand up against the last person, then it's not going to matter if you have Playdead because they're just going to, like, completely out-damage you, completely out-heal you. So that's why, to an extent, I kind of say... Yeah, play aggressively. Play aggressively late game with with play dead. Play aggressively with it for sure. Um, if you don't have play dead on cooldown going into the last battle of the game against the last person, that's not the end of the world. Because like I said, a lot of times if you don't play aggressively in the late game, your play dead isn't going to make an effect. Isn't going to have any effect against the last person in the game. Um, the only time play dead has kind of an effect in beating an opponent one v one is when you're matching them or if they're slightly out damaging you slightly beating you down um that's the only time kind of play dead helps you beat someone 1v1 or if they have no health items i suppose if they have no health items and they're doing a lot of damage and you're doing and you're dealing a decent amount of damage then then yeah for sure um play dead just beat someone's beat someone's ass down but like assuming they're matching you for recovery items then that's what i'm trying to get at I also kind of, uh, I should probably mention, I suppose, the synergy between her abilities. I mean, it goes without saying, but the synergy between her abilities are really, really nice. Because, like, you can, um, I mean, on paper, on paper, they're really nice. In practice, a lot of times, they just heal it off. <laughs> but, uh, on paper, um, the synergy between her abilities are really, really nice. Because they can, um, beat your ass down with, uh, onto play dead, and then you just revenge play, and they're, like... If you guys have been matching blows, then their health is going to be really, really low. Um, even if they just start healing uh, while you're uh, in play dead, or you, like you know what I mean, like even if they start healing, a lot of times revenge play is still going to do a lot of damage. Assuming like I don't know, like assuming like maybe you get them down to because they're you're playing hyper aggressively, right? Saying like saying this is like early in the game. Um, so let's say you get them like really, really low, and they get you low enough to prompt play dead, then. It's going to be nice. Be and I mean, another cool thing, I suppose, is to mention in terms of interactions between your abilities is you can kind of bluff that you don't have... I mean, okay, this this might sound retarded, okay? This might actually sound stupid, but it, it's kind of a cool idea, kind of on paper. I think that might be a cool idea, I suppose. Uh, don't don't call me... Don't don't call me an idiot. Uh, I mean, I guess you can, but like... My, 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 my idea, okay? Okay, the MLG strats, you bluff that you don't have healing items, and while you're in a 1v1, while you're fighting someone out early game, you bluff that you don't have healing items, and you hold on to one healing item that can get you up to at least 50% health, and you just keep beating this person down, um, because they're obviously not gonna, like, bluff that they don't have healing items, that sounds insane. Um, th yo, that would be, that would be the real strats, though, you know, the real strats. But anyway, so, you bluff that you don't have a healing item, and you just keep fighting them down, and you're fighting a, kind of a losing battle, because you're holding on to one of your healing items, and then they kind of beat you down into play dead, and then you use that healing item, you put yourself up to, up to 50%. They can't see that you're up to 50%, because they can't search you. They're sitting at, like, what, like, 20%, 30% after this 1v1, maybe 40%. Uh, so you put yourself up to a large amount of health, um, while you're kind of can't be found, and then you find them, and then you just beat their ass down. Because you search them up, and you can combo into them. You search them up, you can revenge play into them, and then you can, uh, just attack into them. That's gonna do a lot of damage, and, like, they, they might not even run away at that point. Like, honestly, like, I mean, maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't, but, like, they might not even run away at that point, because they can't find you, so they might assume you left, they might assume... Because when you left, you are 1 HP. So, like, what... In, on paper, like, what are they fearing, right? Like, you could come back with 1 HP and uh, beat their ass down? I don't think so, right? So, I think that's a cool idea, you know? Like, you bluff that you don't have the healing item, and then you just combo into them. I think that sounds really, really fun. In all honesty, like, uh, maybe maybe I'm retarded, but, like, that's, okay, th that's the next level MLG strat, fam, okay? This is, this is going straight into the esports, okay? Like, I'm saying, bro. Alright, I, I don't know how much time I have left, to be honest with you guys. Uh, I know this has been going for, like, a long time, and that's, uh, it's probably not the best. I really, really got to try to cut these down, and I'm trying, I'm trying, but they always just come out so long. I just, I always got a lot to say. I always like to hear myself talk, I suppose. Um, and I mean, with kind of, like, the bookmarks and the, um, kind of, uh, uh, table of contents at the beginning, I feel I'm kind of justified making these as long as they get, but... I mean, it's getting a bit, it's getting a bit ridiculous. Like when they get to be like 40 minutes, yeah, like you know, it's time to stop. But I really wanted to put this, this route in specifically, and I feel like I might cut out the explanation of the previous route 
and just for the gameplay. And what I done, what I did in case I did cut that part is, out is I explained the route and I put gameplay in the background depicting the route. And I might cut it out because, like I said, I have gameplay for it. But this route here, I want to explain, and the reason I want to explain it as opposed to showing gameplay is because it's boring as hell. Okay, this route is boring. Let me get into, let me get into it. Okay, guys. So basically, two ways to play. Okay, and. It's gonna it's gonna sound a bit awkward. And it's gonna be, it's gonna sound a bit weird, but okay. There's two kind of there's two main ways to play, um, in general. Not even just Jenny, but Jenny is like a prime example for it because her ability is tailored towards an offensive, or this other playstyle that I'm gonna be bringing. Up. So her tail ability is really tailored towards both possible options, and it's really a contrast. It's like a very very big contrast, but like kind of two completely different extremes. Okay, so option one is playing to win okay you play to win and that might sound obvious like it might sound obvious it might sound like hey no shit you're trying to win that's the point of the game but no the thing is the point of the game is to rank up but th th that well i mean i mean i mean that, that that's the that, that could be the that could be the point of the game okay to some people the point is to win okay and to have fun to have fun you gotta throw fun in there okay but to some people that's the point of the game okay, right winning having fun that's the point of the game but in reality looking at the ladder Placing top 5, ranking up, that's technically, when you think of it, that's the point of the game. It's to, it's to rank up, it's to rank up, that's the point, that's the reason you play ranked, that's the reason you rank up, that's the reason you do any of this stuff, is to rank up, gain rank points. Obviously, the higher you get, the better your rank points, obviously, that goes without saying. Um, but, I gotta get into this, okay, yes? Playing to win versus playing to rank. And the first path that I showed you, if I didn't explain it, you'll see the gameplay in the background, is playing to win, okay? And when you play to win, you go for game, okay? And when you go for game, it's a risk, okay? It really is a risk. Okay? It's a risk-reward scenario. Players don't scale equally. That's a very, very important thing to think. Think of it as, like, the game of risk, okay? Everyone knows risk. Don't be saying, I don't know what that shit is. Everyone knows what fucking risk is, okay? It's the best game. Best board game. One of the best board games. It's a pretty good board game. But anyways, think of risk, okay? When you take over a country, you grow in size, but other players shrink in size, okay? You're, there's not a symbiotic relationship where everyone can grow, and then at the very end, you have this all-out, legitimate, um... Uh, battle royale style where everyone is the same power and you know it's this it's this it's this high adrenaline uh final get final final gambit for everyone okay it's not okay everyone scales di you're gonna have people scaling differently and realistically after like five minutes if even probably less than that but like i'm gonna say as a benchmark okay after five minutes realistically only two maybe three people are actually in the running for first place, okay? Because, like I said, for some players to grow, players have to shrink, okay? And there's not gonna be more than like, maybe, maybe on a good day, three people who are going to be, you know, having a chance at actually getting first place. That's what I'm gonna talk about here. First place, We're playing to win, okay? So that's a very, very important thing. That's why it's high risk, very, very high risk, but it's very rewarding play game, gameplay, okay? It's so fun. Playing to win is a very, very fun way to play. It's also very stress-inducing. It's also very annoying when you, you're you playing and then you just randomly get crit or you lag or some shit happens and you lose from that. It's it's annoying, okay? Everyone hates losing from hacks and this is the play style that uh, you, you lose to hacks more often, I suppose. But honestly, it's how most people play. And I think there's another way to play that I have to talk about and it's playing to rank up. Because when you think of it, getting second place, if getting second place is not as hard as getting first place, because first place person can literally just kill everyone, and hey, that's pretty good. So if you're if you're playing for first place, you're gonna be using a lot of your resources to fight for first place. If you're playing for second place, you have a lot of wiggle room to hold on to your resources and save your resources as a safety net. And that's what I'm trying to get at right here. Playing for second place playing for even third place as a worst case scenario is not that hard to do not that hard to do at all especially when you have abilities like play dead especially when you put focus and emphasis on survivability and that's what this build is putting out to do okay so i'm going to go over it and as mentioned this is focus on survivability this is focus on getting second place you are not going to win with this route you are going to rank up it is very easy to use this route is very very easy to get results with this route is very easy to climb the ladder but 
boring as hell. Boring as hell, okay? Don't get me wrong. Boring as hell. It's also not going to get you first place. Your win rate is going to look like shit if you use this route. But your rank points are going to look nice. And at the end of the day, hey, you gotta you gotta get to that lion so that you get the uh, get the uh, get that skin at the end of the at the end of the season. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes cheese is the way to go. You know, sometimes cheese is just the way to go. So let's go over it, okay? Sorry for all that babbling. I had to give an explanation for this garbage strategy that I'm about to bring up, but playing to rank up here's the build okay start at the cemetery why do you start at the cemetery bunch of reasons first reason it's not contested have you ever seen people start at the cemetery sometimes okay sometimes but it's very rare and you can generally pick out if you're gonna have trouble with cemetery being contested at the very beginning so cemetery it's not really contested um the second place you have to go to is kind of contested so that's a little bit annoying but you have to you, you can have a little bit of wiggle room in the second place because there's a few locations you can go to i suppose i mean it's a bit awkward because you need two items okay oh uh, yeah I'm, I'm getting off track oh my god so cemetery uh get the long sword okay we're going with style we're not going with guns we don't fuck with the vision we're playing as i mentioned a very passive very defensive very focused on sustainability so we do not want to be giving away a location okay um we're not going to be going like full jp where we've just like unequip our weapon and use that as like a, an extra inventory slot okay okay we're not going that far okay that's that, that's getting a bit out of hand but we're not using guns okay so fuck that shit throw it out throw it in the garbage cemetery we're gonna get a long sword okay and starting with a gun is not as bad because like i said um cemetery isn't really contested so you've got a lot of time to just get what you need so cemetery you pick up the long sword cemetery you pick up a feather you get a spear handle and you get a uh, what's it called? Uh, well, okay, you get a feather. You, get, you make this. Uh, you make the spear handle. It's basically what I'm trying to say. You make the spear handle out of the bamboo and the piano wire. I think I, I generally just say spear handle because it's kind of it goes without saying how to make it. But you get them both at the cemetery. So you make the spear handle. You get the feather. You craft that into a. It's like a duster or something. I don't remember what it's called because like it's, I I don't use it. I just use it as an uh, in between item thing. But uh, anyway, you, you turn that into the duster or whatever. Get yourself a pickaxe, get yourself iron ore. So all of these you need, so I wouldn't leave without these items. I'd just stay till you get them all. Um, but once you get them all, you move over to the alley. And like I said, the alley is kind of a traffic area. It's not as heavily contested as a few other areas. I would say the slum, maybe the uptown, maybe the hotel are a little bit more contested than the alley. But early game, the alley is going to be in, cont in contention for um, people who start at the hospital. So stuff like Hun Wu is going to be going in between the hospital in between the uh, alley so that's going to be a little awkward i i did mention plus not to mention you don't have an armor yet because you're building mid armor items first and you're building the duster before you're building the actual suit so that's a little bit awkward as i mentioned but the point is you you can play around with it okay you can play around with it you can go to the alley and if people go to the alley then you leave and like i said this is focused on sustainability so you're not fighting people you're not building up as much mastery if you have people and if they're out damaging you or if they're doing a lot of damage to you then you just go and you come back later and there's lots of areas you can go to um it's really awkward because you don't have a starter weapon until you get cloth and scissors and cloth from the alley so it, it's it's awkward here okay i gotta admit it's a little bit awkward with the alley part okay i i do i i do acknowledge that it's definitely awkward with the alley because you don't have a starter armor but i do think that this is i do think this is worthwhile and while this might not be the best route for the playstyle, i do think that the the cheese play to rank play style is 100 percent a legitimate play style. but anyways going into the alley you get cloth you get cloth you get two cloths you get cloth cloth scissors that's gonna give you a suit suit into the uh the feather duster okay i gotta find out what it's called okay Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta find out what it's actually called. So I can't just, I can't just keep, keep, uh, keep calling it the, uh, the feather duster. Um, let me see. Oh my God! It is the feather duster. I'm so good. Okay, so the feather duster into the suit is gonna give you the butler's suit, which is a base 50 armor, which is going to hold you over until you get the, um, the other items you need. And the focus on this set is to rush the crown rush the Imper imperial crown to be specific and kind of use the abil that ability of the crown and kind of just the overall um overall uh armor uh, powerness uh, the overall defensive capabilities is what i'm trying to say of that crown to kind of sustain the early game to push you into the late game with what you're trying to build and then you can replace your armor later so the butler's suit is pretty bad okay i get it but it's very quick to make and it's very it's a long 
routes less traveled, and it's very like it's very nice to build, and it's on the way of the Imperial Crown, which is kind of what we're trying to focus on. So it's it, it'll do for now is what we're getting at. Replace it later. Get Ghost Rider. Basically, find Ghost, find uh, Tree of Light, Tree of Tree of Light, and make the Ghost Rider. Okay, very very easily there. Anyways, back to the alley. We got cloth. We got scissors. We got cloth. We made ourselves a suit. Um, after this, uh, some of the items here are kind of rare, but I like. I like trying to get them, okay? They're very good items, uh, especially the cooking pot. I don't like to leave the alley without the cooking pot. It's hard, it's kind of hard to get because there's only two of them, but I really like the idea of getting the cooking pot because we're going into an area after that we're gonna really want the cooking pot. So I do I do what I can to get the, that cooking pot, okay? I really want that pot. Uh, get running shoes here, get scrap metal. Scrap metal with your iron ore is going to give you the steel, and that's really nice because you can upgrade your weapon. Um, gonna have extra steel left over right here i haven't really incorporated a way to make use of this steel but i encourage you to look into options and um basically fix my shitty route if you want to incorporate the steel because i think i never like making something that has a quantity of two and then wasting the second i never like doing that uh, st uh sheets i don't like wasting sheets i don't like wasting steel i don't like wasting things that come in quantities of two because especially things that are uh, building into armor. That's that's my main pet peeve is wasting things that go into armor Like if you if you make the battle suit and then you don't use that sheet for something else like um, uh, I guess like a sword stopper or uh, the helm Then I don't I don't know that's a pet peeve of mine. But anyway moving on uh, scrap metal upgrade your weapon So you'll have a little bit of a thing to poke back with it's not really it doesn't really matter what you're hitting back with but it's on the way which is important you're not going out of the way for a weapon and you're, it's going to mean you're not dealing one damage, so you're a little bit less passive than completely passive. So that's basically why I like to do it. Uh, if you can't find scrap metal and you're taking forever and you're wasting time at the alley, then I, you can leave it and come back later. Um, it's not the end of the world, but uh, I, I like to I like to upgrade the weapon at this point. That's just me. Um, but yeah, I like to I like to try to upgrade the weapon at this point. And the scrap the scrap metal is also pretty hard to find, I suppose. But if you're spending a lot of time in the alley to try to get stuff like cooking pot, you'll probably stumble upon it. Uh, you also have the bracelet here, and I think find the bracelet is pretty important. Yeah, you definitely want to get the bracelet here. You definitely want to pick out that bracelet. I don't really like the idea of coming back later to get the bracelet. Uh, if you're forced out, then uh, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do. But I definitely like the idea of trying to get the bracelet as soon as possible. So get it. Uh, simple. Uh, after the alley, you move on to the pond, and the pond is a really, really good area. The pond is a really, really nice area. Uh, you're gonna get three gemstones. Um, if you're forced out of here, you can kind of dance around between the pond, the trail, um, stuff like that, and then you can kind of build up items, build up recovery stuff as you go. But yeah, between the pond, the pond is the ideal place because the pond is gonna give you the uh, recovery items that we're preferring. But uh, you can dance around from the pond to the trail even potentially to the tunnel uh and if you only get two gemstones and you're forced out that's okay because you we are going to the tunnel later on and we can pick up that final gemstone there but ideally try to get all three gemstones while you're here um plastic bottle you can get for uh you can get and you can make your stamina items really early which is kind of nice so you'll be able to have a good supply of stamina items um this route actually has a lot of stamina items that you can find uh, or well not a lot that you can find but it restocks you up on stuff like water uh, quite frequently so that's kind of nice but yeah you can build up your uh, plastic bottle which is just going to give you uh, stamina sustainability which is really nice um, then you're going to find health recovery items here which are carp which goes into bread which is really really nice i gotta say uh, that's a really quick really pretty decent recovery item to kind of build right off the bat uh, and then a mud fish or a turtle shell and you're going to put that in with your cooking pot because like i said this is why we wanted that cooking pot because we really want to have you really need a safety net of health items. Like I said, like we're spending a lot of time running, we're spending a lot of time kind of negating damage, and without a way of restoring that health, then we're gonna be wasting. We're, we're we're gonna be falling behind in terms of what we're trying to do, anyways. Because you definitely need that damage mitigation with the health recovery items. Because if you get to the point where you're like 20 HP and you have no health recovery items, you're in a bit of a pickle, man. You 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 fucked up. So anyways, yeah. Uh, you try to get. Um, if you got two cooking pots, that's like the dream um but yeah cooking pot and a mudfish or a shell and you're gonna make yourself uh another health recovery item that's really really nice uh, after here move over to the fire station the fire station you'll get two hammers you can use your two hammers and the pickaxe and the bracelet that you got from the cemetery and the alley respectively 
uh, and you use those with all your three gemstones, and you're going to make your um, your Imperial Crown, and that's really nice. This is really quick, uh, really early off into the game, you got a base 52 armor, uh, like, um, uh, I can't remember the, like, legendary, epic, uh, whatever it is, but you have the highest tier of of the of the legendaries i suppose uh you've got a really really good armor right off the bat you've got a replaceable but decent early game uh armor as well which is kind of cool you have a not garbage weapon really nice uh really early which is nice which is actually pretty decent to make to upgrade into like the parallel sword is pretty quick to upgrade as well so i'll be getting into that really soon anyways but yeah you get the you get the hammers you make that imperial uh, you make the imperial crown and that's really really nice to have that early game especially with a really quick armor as well uh you get two batteries here and you get the watch and then you'll move over to the tunnel at the tunnel you'll get two wires and you'll get an iron ball and that'll make you that'll upgrade your running shoes all the way up to the up to the detective heelys which is really nice um like i said if you miss a gemstone you can pick it up here as well and uh whetstone you get a whetstone here and that's kind of nice because later on because we can use that to kind of push our parallel sword to the to the very to the limits you know what i'm saying but uh, if you if you really couldn't care less about the weapon i guess you, you really don't even have to get the whetstone but i like to have at least some kind of weapon because this gives you a little bit of wiggle room in terms of a damage output it's not a whole heck of a lot of damage output but it's better than like dealing like one damage to the enemy and yeah that's that's basically one thing like you're on the way, you may as well do it. Uh, you have to go a little bit out of the way. Uh, don't get me wrong, you have to go a little bit out of the way to build up the Parallel Sword, because the cemetery, you can't be bringing the, the scimitar, you can't be bringing that from the cemetery. Like, you don't have the item slots to do it. You just don't, so that's a bit tough. Um, the thing is, you can... The thing is, you can get the scimitar from, like, the trail, and then you can build uh, recovery items from the trail. Uh, basically, is what I'm trying to get. But yeah, I'm getting out of hand, so tunnel we get your wires two of those two of those of course um you make uh into your detective keys and then you just have your wire and the battery um uh, parts as a single item as well and you hold on to that um after that we go off to the school the school is going to give us a lighter and a pen lighter is important because like i said we're going to be trying to build up the parallel sword if we can and having the lighter and water is just going to be making it so we're not wasting our time looking for the scimitar i hate wasting time looking for a single item so that's basically it you have you have the lighter here and that's really nice you get the pen here which is the important part uh, after here uh you've got a lot of freedom here after here you want to finish upgrading the galaxy watch uh just go to a place with paper get paper bam galaxy watch done best best armor in the game it's now on your wrist done then like i said you have the lighter you're in the trail you're looking for the scimitar to fully upgrade it you of course like you mentioned you have to use one of your lighters onto the whetstone but like you still got two so that's four uh four boiling waters that's enough to that's enough to entertain you while you look for the scimitar but um anyways you can go to the trail get the scimitar get a whole bunch of recovery items or even a bunch of stamina recovery items as well either branch or oriental grass and then after that, all you like i said all you need is the the paper and then you're pretty well upgraded from here as a start um uh, you've got leg armor, you've got a really good head armor, you've got the best arm armor. The only thing that's really lacking right here is your clothes armor, but at some point in the game, it would be nice if you get a Tree of Life. Tree of Life goes directly into the Ghost Rider. And then after that, you're you're pretty much set. Like You've got everything you need. You've got the Parallel Sword, which is going to be a decent kind of... Um, decent kind of poke damage weapon which is just a weapon it's like you may as well have something right that's on the way and you can build stuff on the way you be I, I think it'd be i think it's a waste to just not build a weapon and just you know like even in this um the idea where you're just kind of going for going for going for second place but uh yeah that's basically everything for that um this is probably like the longest part of the video holy shit dude but yeah um that's everything for that and i know i like rant on along about uh, on a lot about things that are kind of irrelevant and i know that this could be a lot shorter than it is but i mean i had a lot that i wanted to say um i had a lot that i wanted to kind of get in there and i mean like i said like i get that a lot of it is probably not really that relevant but i, I did want to get a lot of it uh, a lot of things off and i did want to kind of say a lot of things and i found i i, I personally think that um saying a lot of uh, saying a kind of bunch of things i mean i guess it kind of dilutes the content uh, dilutes the message but i like kind of the idea of having 
everything in kind of a big format like this and kind of having a lot of information kind of in the same place. I kind of prefer that as opposed to just like a piece of paper with a route. Like, go here, get this, this, this. Go here, get this, this, this. I like the idea of explaining things. I like the idea of going over a lot of things. Um, just, I don't know. That's just personal opinion, I thought. Because like I said, there's not very many guides on YouTube. So I thought I'd take a, take a gander, take a shot at trying to make my own. So uh, I don't know. Let me know if you guys don't like this. Let me know if I really... If you guys are just like, okay fam, you, you need to cut this shit back, this is getting out of hand, this is too long. Because, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd probably tend to agree. But anyways, let me know what you guys think, let me know who you want me to do next, if you want me to do anyone next. And, um, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, see you around.